The eagle is often used as a symbol of strength, but this year thousands of juvenile eagles in B.C. may die from starvation. Young eagles haven't developed their hunting skills yet, and they depend on scavenging for food. But the dramatically low returns of this year's chum salmon means there is little sustenance to see them through the winter. And David Hancock, the biologist who began those popular eagle cams, he counted 1,400 hungry eagles at the landfill in Delta recently. They were there searching for food. David, welcome back to BC Almanac. Well, good to talk to you, Mark. You've never seen anything like this, have you, at the landfill? So many eagles. No, it's the largest number we had, and that's followed... Uh, about two weeks earlier, we had uh, about 7,200 on a mile and a half, two square mile area up on the Chehalis Harrison River. You know, that's just 50 miles east of Vancouver. It's probably the biggest gathering of eagles of any kind anywhere in the world. And that's exciting. I mean, we were, we were totally beside ourselves to see that kind of mass of, of predators. But, but, it's all that really a, a sad situation because it's happened as, as you kind of nicely introduced it because of the lack of chum salmon all down the alaska northern and central and southern british columbia coast we did not get the return of chum salmon this year and that's the bulk of the protein that feeds not just eagles but the bears and the, and the wolves and so on so that's what gets them through the winter isn't it essentially well it's it really in alaska starts as late as the end of July and August, and it works its way down here because the, the farther south you come, the later the runs are. And, and the eagles get forced down south as, of course, winter freezes up the northern river. So there's, there's a natural thing. The rivers freeze up to the north, but also the salmon spawn later, thank you for the eagles, and so the, the food is available to them a little bit later in the season. We normally get this big peak concentration in the November and December, and they last, the number of carcasses last on the river, right through until some years, February. But this year, they didn't last until, well, there weren't any really chum salmon at all. So what the eagles had to do was take the alternative fish. And in the case of the, the Chehalis run, we were fortunate that just when all these thousands of eagles arrived, we were just finishing up a coho run. Not a big one, just a normal one, but they concentrated on eating all those dead carcasses that were drifting along the riverside and uh, but within 10 days they'd eaten them out and so we went from 7,280 or something eagles down to 348 within two weeks because they'd, they'd eaten out all the carcasses. Where's the food? So <laughs> dispersed to go and look for some alternative and that's not been easy and that's been the problem for them and they're showing up literally starving to death throughout the, the whole coast because there simply are not enough natural alternatives. At some reports that they're, they're actually uh, starving and falling from the sky or people can walk right up to them and, and pick them and, and take them to shelters. If, if people do see a struggling eagle in the, in the wild, what should they do? Well, that, that's pretty straightforward. I mean, I've never heard of one actually falling from the sky except on the media. But um, they certainly, once they get so weak because they've simply not had food, they drop to the ground and, and then they're in great difficulty. They simply um, try to hide and they, they die. But if people see them, then phone your local um, rehabilitator. There's always wildlife rehabilitators all throughout the province. And that's what they do. They will go out and they will rescue these things. Here in the lower mainland, uh, they call owl. If you're talking about southern Vancouver Island, it's wild art. If you talk about farther up the island, uh, it's mountain air or avian rescue. Um, these people are all geared up with their volunteers to go out and, and rescue these eagles. So that, that's, that's the best people can do. They shouldn't try grabbing the eagles. It, Eagle will defend itself, and it won't know your good intentions. That could get nasty, yes. And and I guess we can only hope that the, the herring runs come in good numbers, and, and that's next month that they start, is well, that right? That's, uh, they're starting to spo uh, gather up in balls right now, and so that could be the savior for many of them. That would be the normal feast, the next feast. The, the salmon lie, uh, survive up until, or the carcasses are there to feed the eagles through January and into February. Then comes March. The, uh, the herring balls, and then the ulican in April. But, uh, you know, historically, we've decimated the herring over most of the coast already. So 
that's part of the same problem. We've over-harvested the food sources that the eagles and the orcas and the bears need. And, and so it's not just we've over-harvested the salmon. We've already over-harvested the herring. We've over-harvested the ulican. So it's not a good prospect for eagles this year. It's pretty devastating. With them not having the salmon it, it is a major link because they count on dead salmon for about five to six months of the year. Yes. D- so David? Important. Thank you so much for this snapshot of what's going on uh, right now, and I appreciate you joining us on the show. Great. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. That's David Hancock, wildlife biologist. He's a conservationist and definitely an eagle expert. He's been following their uh, exploits for 40 or 50 years now in our province. 1231, 131 in the mountain time zone, and British Columbians hunkering down.